When I'm doing nerve blocks, which is what we're working towards, it's all 1% lidocaine with 1 to 100,000 epi. Just take a picture of this and 1 to 10 bicarb. If you don't do procedures, this is like what you learn in med school. Very plain, Jane. The reason why the bicarb is it offsets the pH of the epinephrine, which is really acidic, and it burns like fire, man. And so we put bicarb in there, a little tincture of bicarb. It makes it a little better. Now, how do you get a 1 to 10 ratio of bicarb to your lidocaine? That's a real screwball-y thing. I could never figure it out if I had to put a pencil to it. So, but what I know is in a 10 cc syringe, if my, if my team draws up 9 cc's of my mixture, 1% with, and then the last little one cc is bicarb, then I have a one to 10 mixture. So we mix it up in a 10 cc syringe. The first nine is your 1% width. The remaining one cc is your bicarb. Does everyone track with me? So this is what we're gonna use all of our local injections with right here. Your max dose is seven milligrams per kilogram. That's super, super, super important. Seven milligrams per kilogram. Now this is where I start to lose people. My son is terrible at math and he would just hate this part of the lecture. But it's important for you as providers. So I'm a very simple guy, if you can't tell, I need simple things, right? And if I have to do a bunch of math, you've already lost me. So just in general, and I'll tell you how I get there, but if I have to use more than a bottle, then I'm move, mixing to messin. Super simple rule. The reason why I arrived at that, most of these bottles are 50 mLs. 50 mLs, in 50 mLs, there's 500 milligrams of lidocaine, okay? So back to our max dose, if you're a 70 kilogram individual, how many milligrams do you get? What's the math, 490? About 500, there's 500 in here, so that's why I have my line in the sand. If I'm having to do a treatment area that would be bigger than what this bottle can, um, can treat, then I'm going to Tumescent. Did everyone see how I arrived there? Okay, so this is our local injections. One thing that we always forget, friends, not only can you do your topical and Pronox, what if you're doing a small area like lower lids? Do injection blebs. I love injection blebs. Look at this. I get my own, and I hate waiting 45 minutes with topical, so Nurse Beth just infiltrates just tiny little blebs, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six little blebs in my lids, lids, and guess what I feel after that? Absolutely nothing. I feel the first six sticks, like Janine's going to and she's gonna do so good, and then I feel nothing after that. I actually prefer it to topical, because I don't have to wait 45 minutes, I get these little injection blebs and then I'm done. So if you're doing small areas, like, perioral, talk about a sensitive area above the lip, holy smokes. One, two, three, four, five, six little blebs, yeah, they hurt, they bring tears to your eyes, but then you're done, you don't feel anything. So don't forget the power of injection blebs. Nerve blocks we're gonna get to at the very, very end, hold that thought, we're gonna show you how to do nerve blocks. I use the same mixture, we'll go over this anatomy. And lastly, tumescent, yes ma'am. The question is how soon after the bleb do you do it? Remember, you're talking to a surgeon who has no patience. So the second that I can manage to put the syringe down, I am immediately treating you. Okay, that's what we do. Now the question is how long should you wait? If you want a textbook answer and you're using epinephrine for vasoconstriction, the peak vasoconstriction comes at 27 minutes. I'm never waiting 27 minutes for anything in my office, okay? So it's a, it's a, do it and go.